Good morning, everyone. Welcome once again to the DLSU IALU Sustainability Lectures. My name is Ria Sumagang. I'm a PhD student from DLSU Manila, and I'm stepping in on behalf of Dr. Katrin Aviso as your host this morning, together with my co-host, Dr. Aris. Hi, good morning. <laughs> I'm uh, Dr. Ari Sobando. I'm the Assistant Dean for Research and Advanced Studies of the College of Engineering of De La Salle University. So good morning. Uh, we're gathered here today uh, for this very unique uh, La Salle Sustainability Lecture. Uh, but before we start, uh, let's start with a prayer. Perhaps, Ria, we can play the yes. La yes. prayer. Okay, hold on. I... Can everyone see my screen? Yes. yes. Oh. Not yet. Oh, not yet. There we go. Okay. Thank you very much, Ria, for sharing that prayer. And to briefly introduce uh, this sustainability series, uh, an introduction uh, will be given by Dr. Raymond Tan, the Vice President for Research and Innovation of De La Salle University. Dr. Tan. Uh, thanks very much. Good morning, good evening, or good afternoon, depending on which part of the planet you're in. Uh, please allow me to share just uh, for a few minutes, the background of the IALU Sustainability Lecture Series. Uh, we're now deep into the second year of this lecture series. By my count, uh, today's talk will be the 20th. And uh, this was initiated 
in the first year of the pandemic, uh, based on initial discussions with my colleagues. Uh, let me recognize first uh, Chancellor Emeritus and Delisal University representative to the IALU Research Committee, Dr. Carmelita Kebenko. Uh, my colleague as well, um, and uh, career mentor when I was much younger, uh, the director of the Center for Engineering and Sustainable Development Research, Dr. Alvin Colaba, and um, the Dean of our Gokongwe College of Engineering, Dr. Kathleen Aviso, who is unable to join us this morning. In the late months of 2020, we started planning, holding a lecture series online as a way to build awareness among members of the International Association of La Salle Universities. This is a global network of higher education institutions spanning multiple continents, as you will see, um, and quite a large number, for instance, in Latin America and some in North America, uh, only relatively few in Asia, but we also have uh, in Europe and uh, Africa and the Middle East, a significant number of institutions. And we were largely, prior to the lecture series, uh, mostly unaware of what the other institutions were doing. And we thought that a monthly, one or nine, one hour, 19 minute lecture, just sharing initiatives on sustainability, the sort of efforts being done in the various institutions to help build a better planet would be a way to bring this global network together. And thus uh, about two years on, here we are and we've established a very nice uh, routine and, and uh, eventually we expect this to be a, a tradition of Yalu. The lecture series is part of our institution's response to two very important documents. In 2015, uh, Pope Francis and the Vatican City published Laudato Si, which is uh, an encyclical focusing on sustainable development, basically in the words of Pope Francis on care for our common home. And this was intended to reach out to the Roman Catholic global community and inspire them to, to live more sustainable lives and rethink the development paths that we normally consider to be part of development. In the same year, the United Nations released the 17 Sustainable Development Goals, which for the secular world provide a roadmap or scorecard, if you will, on progress towards different aspects of sustainable development, ranging from poverty alleviation to food security, all the way to the 17th, which is uh, cross-sectoral partnerships to achieve these goals. And uh, with these two very important uh, foundational documents, De La Salle University uh, updated its mission vision and inserted the key phrase attuned to a sustainable earth and therefore, since then, a lot of our strategic initiatives have been geared towards greening the planet and greening human society. The lecture series itself, which was launched in January of 2021, is formatted uh, mostly as follows on screen. Uh, we hold the lectures where possible on the last Wednesday of each month, so it becomes predictable and people can put that in their calendars. We streamed the lectures via Zoom for those who are able to attend the sessions in real time, but the sessions have also been recorded and uploaded to YouTube so that those who are, because of, for instance, uh, time zone difficulties or unable to attend the live sessions can at least uh, see the lectures uh, in the YouTube recordings. The topics covered are diverse. Uh, all of course pertain to sustainable development and its different uh, dimensions. And we've also explored alternative formats. Most of the lectures have been uh, talks by one or two uh, eminent experts, but we've had panel discussions as well. That's a format which we will continue to explore uh, where, where it's appropriate in the future. And most of our resource persons, of course, have come from the institutions that make up the IALU network, as well as uh, their um, their contacts from their professional networks. And of course, uh, 
This lecture series has been hosted and continues to be hosted by our Center for Engineering and Sustainable Development Research. Uh, that concludes my brief presentation. Uh, thank you very much for joining us again. And uh, thank you to our resource speaker for agreeing to share his expertise with us. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Tan, for the introduction of this uh, lecture scene. But before we go to the main lecture, main event uh, for today, uh, let us all welcome Ms. Patricia uh, Kaiser Mangan to briefly introduce the uh, you know, Universidad La Fal in Brazil. Ms. Patricia. Hello, good morning, good evening. I'm so glad to be here today. I'm honored to be able to represent once again Unila Sali Canoas, a be really brief. I'm here just to send greetings from our rector and our uh, directive board. And as many of you already know, our university has its main campus at Canoas in the south of Brazil, where we teach, we research, and we work integrated into our community, trying to overcome problems, including social problems that are even more challenging in the present times. So, as I said, we are in the south of Brazil and Christian brothers arrived here more than a hundred years ago <clears throat> to teach children and young adults. When La Salle started some decades later and it was born 46 years ago as a university strongly connected to our community and research has been part of our practices especially in the last two decades. And nowadays, one of our duties as La Salle community is to advise, is to teach masters and PhD students and try to make our research to be as impactful as this one that my dear colleague Mauricio will be presenting you today. So I'm here especially to welcome you all in the name of La Salle and to thank you, Professor Mauricio Almero that is a researcher in two of our graduate studies program, health and human development and social memory and cultural heritage. So thank you very much for preparing this moment for us. And thank you all my dear yellow friend, especially our dear friends from the Philippines, which made this moment possible. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, Ms. Patricia. Uh, we hope moving forward, uh, of course, uh, there would be some exchanges uh, between our university, both for students and faculty. And now, uh, for the main event uh, of this lecture, uh, may I call on the director for the Center of Engineering Sustainable Development Research to introduce our speaker for this evening, Dr. Alvin Colaba. Thank you, uh, <clears throat> Professor Aris uh, Ubando and uh, Ms. Ria Sumagang. Uh, good morning, good evening over there in Brazil and some parts of the world. Uh, Chancellor Emeritus Carmelita Pebenco, Brother Joe Scheiter. We have, of course, uh, the Vice President for Research and Innovation, uh, Professor Raymond Tan, Professor Patricia Kaiser, Professor Rogerio Tovo, uh, who is also joined here with us. Brother Joe Scheiter, De La Salle brothers, colleagues, friends, uh, ladies and <clears throat> gentlemen. Uh, we are uh, really honored to have another distinguished speaker uh, for this uh, IALU uh, Sustainability Lecture Series in the person of Professor, uh, Professor uh, Almerio. Professor Mauricio Pereira Almerao. Uh, he is currently a professor at the uh, La Salle University in Canoas, Brazil. He, he hails originally from Porto Alegre City, the state of Rio Grande del Sul in Brazil. He received his Master of Science degree in 2005 in animal biology, mainly on behavior, and his genetics and molecular biology and evolution uh, PhD degree from the Federal University of Rio Grande do Sul, Porto Alegre in Brazil. 
part of his doctorate was held in France in 2007 to 2008 at the uh, Ecology and Biology uh, Interactions in France, after which uh, he was involved in plant molecular biology in 2011, uh, 2010 and 2011, and animal conservation uh, research projects, uh, which was uh, between 2012 and 2014. For two years, 2009 to 2011, uh, Professor Almerau was a consultant for the Ministry of Environment, working on threatened species issues. Since 2014, he has been a professor and currently heads the Master uh, environmental impact assessment. And in the last 10 years, his research has focused on conservation biology, especially in conservation projects involving invasive alien species. Ladies and gentlemen, we now have the honor of uh, presenting Professor Mauricio Pereira Almerao on his topic. Uh, what is the topic? Uh, anyway, uh, is going to speak on the restoration of degraded lands in southern Brazil, the Restorap wrap up project. Ladies and gentlemen, Professor Almeral. Uh, good morning, good evening to all the southern colleagues. Uh, thank you, Professor Patricia, my dear colleague, and Professor Alvin for this kind of introduction. Um, I will share my, my screen and start talking about this inter interesting issue. Do you see my screen? Do you hear me well? Yes. Yes, you yes. can. Yes. yes. Okay. So, um, my name is Mauricio. I'm from La Salle Canoas, Brazil. Uh, first of all, I would like to say thank you to the organizer, uh, especially to Kathleen that made the, the first contact with me. Uh, so, this is the title of my presentation Restoration of Degraded Lands in Southern Brazil, the South Up Approach. Um, this is a project that we have been developing for almost two years now. Uh, but before talking about this, I would like to have a very brief discussion about sustainability. Uh, well, I, I'm a biologist, by the way, and, and, and in the last years uh, as a researcher, I've been spending some time in conservation biolo biology issues in which I have experiences with endangered species and also with evasive alien species biodiversity as a whole. Uh, both topics are somehow related to sustainability, but I don't consider myself an expert in this issue. Uh, so I, I take my lecture as someone thinking out loud about this issue rather than an expert is thinking about it, okay? Uh, well, uh, in the last seminar, Professor Fabrizio brought to the discussion issues related to sustainability which is one of the main issues of global concern. And there are many challenges to be faced in this field, no doubt about that. Uh, there are several visions and concepts about what sustainability would be. And I brought one a little more complex from APA, uh, the Environmental Policy Agency from the United States. There is everything that we need for our survival and well-being depends either directly or indirectly on our natural environment. To pursue sustain sustainability is to create and maintain the conditions under which humans and nature can exist in a productive harmony to support pre present and future generations. Um, and another much more concise, there is the balance between environment, equity, social aspects, and economy. I got this one from a UCLA website, University of California. Um, and it's, uh, all these three dimensions that sustainability is really understood 
And more relevant than these dimensions are the intersections between them. For example, at the intersection on the environment and society, there are elements related to environmental justice, for example. Two another examples at the intersection between environment and economy emerge questions linked to cost of ecosystem services. And finally, at the intersection uh, between society and economy, there are issues related to business ethics. Uh, looking at these three intersections, the society should seek uh, develop acceptable in terms of social and environmental aspects, viable from the environmental econo economic point of view, and equitable from the, from the social economic point of view. Uh, so the question is, is sustainability still possible? Uh, I do not have an answer to this question, but visibly, especially in some countries, especially in poor countries, in developing countries, this is uh, unattainable, very difficult to achieve. Uh, so uh, from the international strategy proposed by UN, the goals of sustainable development are the most plausible proposition to follow, uh, which is very, very challenging barrier very tangible for a lot of countries. Um, and uh, we are going to look more specifically this uh, uh, SDG 15 life on land. Um, this SDG aims to protect, restore, and promote sustainable use of terrestrial ecosystems, sustainably managed forests, combat des desertification and halt, and reverse land degradation and halt biodiversity loss. Um, over here in this in this order, uh, we have uh, some uh, interesting data about this uh, SDG. For example, almost 90% of global deforestation is due to agricultural expansion, cropland, and livestock expansion. These two main axes of this uh, um, issue. Uh, here on the left, um, we see data on whirlwind use in almost uh, 600 years. Uh, these are the six larger countries of land use for agriculture. Uh, in Brazil, ranks third, and it's recognized to be an agriculture country. Uh, another uh, uh, impressive data between uh, 1985 and 2020, the country had a 44% increase in agricultural areas. So for me, it's very, very uh, impressive. Um, in fact, this SDG is a great, great challenge for a country as it is the greatest example of how far we are from sustainable development. Uh, on the contrary, Concerning the land use, we have more and more problems due to the culture expansion and its consequences. Um, in the subject land use, uh, we see the whole package of unsustainable development. Uh, for example, economic maldevelopment, growth, growth based on unsustainable debt, waste, and equitable consumption by elites, environment, environmental debt, uh, unsustainable. Uh, pollution, the play, natural resources, and also an ethical social values, greed, selfishness, corruption, inequity, violence, and justice, and elitism. Um, so uh, the question is, how can we achieve this SDG? I, 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 I don't have an answer for that uh, either. Uh, it's very, very, very uh, complicated. Uh, so uh, answering this question would already be a great challenge because land use is a very complex issue and we will not have time for discussion today, but I, I strongly recommend this article uh, published, published recently, uh, which deals with facts, challenges, and for sustainability and solutions needed. Uh, just a, a quick example, uh, the values and meanings that land has for people are quite variable and notions of degradation and restoration are also quite relative. Uh, from this, we can have different looks, what is right or wrong. So it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very complicated uh, scenario, but uh, I recommend these articles with a lot of information. 
Um, I believe, I truly believe that one of the biggest challenges of sustainability is that it makes sense to people, special, especially local communities. Local communities uh, need to be evolved, even if they don't have a sustainable way of life or want a more sustainable world. Um, but they, they can really engage themselves if, if they see some direct economic benefit. Uh, sometimes you get stuck in a false idea that people should engage in sustainability because it's the right thing to do and we don't see other ways of approaching the, this issue. Uh, I know this can be a bit controversial of those who believe that people should get involved considering sustainability is a, a, a fair tale, but I think we should be more realistic, especially in developing countries. Um, so in, in, in certain way, this project that addressed that, that issue. The Sarapa is a project coordinated by La Salle University, Canoas, Brazil, and has two main partners. Uh, EMATER, uh, a public agency responsible for agriculture issues, and a federal public university of our state. Uh, the project is supported by Global Environment Facility, the rest or the rest group, which is a large federal government project um, aiming to promote the conservation of biodiversity in Caatinga, Pampa, and Pantanal, these three biomes, aligned with principles on the Convention on Biological Diversity and the United Nations, Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change. Uh, here below are some of the people involved in the project. We have a very engaging team. I take this opportunity to thank each of, uh, one of them who has made a lot of effort to develop this challenging project. And a special thanks to Rafael, the technical coordinator, of this project who also helped me to organize this presentation. So thank you very much Hapel, for this help. Um, so uh, this is a large, a large project uh, gap terrestrial that included 25 sub-projects in a three, uh, these three biomes, uh, Caatinga, Pampa, and Pantanal. Uh, the, the, the financials were, were very substantial, more than $6 million for these 25 uh, uh, sub projects. And uh, the amount allocated for the Saurapo project was $6,100. And in the right uh, over here um, are the other two projects for this biome, uh, Proapa Sustentável and Restaura Pampa. Uh, so these three projects for this this um, this important biome. Uh, before presenting some some results, I thought it's necessary to bring some general information about the context. Uh, so as as you know, uh, Brazil is a large country, fifteen in area over eight billion square kilometers in, kilometers in size. It's divided into five regions, the North region, the Northeast region, the Midwest region, the Southeast region, and the, and the uh, South region, uh, in which we found our five biomes, uh, Amazonia, Caatinga, Cerrado, Pantanal, Mata Atlântica, Atlantic Forest, and also uh, Pampa. Uh, some features of this beautiful biome uh, is the smallest biome, 2% of national territory. Uh, the main feature is, is its grassy vegetation. Uh, in, in this biome are found around 2,600 native plant species. Almost half of this native vegetation is protected in protected areas, but only 3% of this biome is found in protected areas. Uh, like other biomes, the Pampa is threatened by agriculture that has severely impacted native vegetation over the years. And there are some striking cultural aspects like the use of forage species for raising cattle and other domestic animals. Uh, another, another thing is we are here in this, uh, Los Angeles University is here, over here, in this red dot, and we are around five uh, kilometers far from away from the, the study area. 
So this is the, one of the biggest challenge of this project. Um, of, uh, okay, of the countless images that characterizes biome, I think this is very significant because it shows, for me, it shows environmental, social, and economic aspects in this photo. Here we see above a soy plantation, this greenish uh, uh, color. Uh, over here, a eucalyptus plantation. Uh, and uh, here, the native vegetation, the grassy vegetation. Uh, in the center of this image, uh, Gaucho in his horse. Gaucho is an animation given to people who live in, in the Pampa, all over the southern South America, Brazil, uh, Uruguay, and Argentina, and has particular lifestyle habitat, habits uh, like animal husbandry. Uh, so this, this, for me, this image is very, very characteristic. Um, based on what I just said before, you must imagine that there are many degraded areas in Brazil. Here I present a general concept of environmental degradation, which is also an, an expression following Brazilian environmental legislation. Uh, changes imposed by society on natural ecosystems, altering, degrading their characteristics, physical, chemical, and biological, thus compromising the quality of life of human beings. Uh, there are many sources of environmental degradation, such as land use, pollution, and invasive alien species. Invasive, invasive alien species are the major worldwide problem due to global, globalization, and consequently, there is a substantial increase in species translocation among areas. In Brazil, almost 500 of these species have been recorded, we, of which around uh, 200 uh, are plant species. One of them is Eragrossus plana, a grass that came from South Africa in the middle of the century. Uh, this species was introduced as forage uh, to, to feed animals, but cattle only feed on it when there is no other alternative. Uh, the problem with introducing uh, evasive alien species is that many of them have a strong dispersal capacity. Uh, here in the case of plant species through disper disper dispersion of seeds, they are spread in the landscape by wind, but also by humans, uh, especially by displacement of vehicles. Uh, there are estimates on of an increase of 14,000 acres a year in invaded areas by this uh, African South African lovers. Uh, in addition, some characteristics facilitate the establishment of these species, such as allelopathy, uh, high seed production, uh, and ad adaptability of different soil conditions. Uh, from this scenario arise several, several impacts, uh, ecological impacts uh, on native species and economic and social uh, problems. Uh, especially those uh, related to production capacity. Uh, here in the red arrow, arrows, we see the invasive species. Individuals are, are whitened because the dense frost that occurred at that time. And in blue arrows, we see native species among the cattle in the field. Uh, in Brazil, there are two major types of protection areas, full protection area, areas. And sustainable, and sustainable use. And the big difference is the type of use. Uh, the Birapuita protection area is a sustainable use protection area. It was created in early 90s and is a federal protect, pro, protection area. It has an area of 317 acres, expanded into four counties. In this figure, we see the limits of the protection area that received that name because of a large river that crossed the entire area, the entire area called Ibirapita River, within the boundaries of the, the protection areas reside around 300 farmers, 300 producers whose main activity is livestock. Uh, so uh, we have been developing this project for almost two years. As I said before, uh, the project will went soon. Uh, from now on, I will present the methodological steps and some results considering the main objective and each specific objective. So the main objective uh, is to develop and implement a restoration planning 
of the graded areas in uh, 1,755 acres, 20 areas in Ibirapuita protected area. And as a specific objectives, the first one to promote the, the, the engagement of local actors to identify and, class, and classify the areas for restoration, to implement reference units on the properties, to develop and apply a detailed uh, monitoring protocol, and to develop a, a environmental planning for territorial management, and finally to perform the project follow-up. Uh, so uh, the first one to promote the engagement of uh, local uh, actors to achieve these objectives since they want publicity materials, video, podcasts, and a website has been produced in, produced in these materials. Uh, there has always been the participation of the local community, the farmers. Uh, all this material has also been disseminated mainly on our uh, social medias uh, and also in some events related to agriculture sector. Here below are our, our social medias. And on the last, my last slide, if there is some time, I will present one of the podcasts produced by uh, our team. So uh, this is the second one, the to identify and classify, and classify the areas for restoration. Uh, the identification and classification of the areas for restoration were performed considering this, considering size of the invasion, the invasion fossil, lower costs uh, for restoration and connecti con connectivity between remnants. From a total of uh, 50 properties, properties, 20 were selected to participate, participate in, the, in the project. These proper, properties were evaluated considering the environmental quality of the native areas. Here an analysis was performed based on the different parameters parameter, and from that a, a proposition of an index that varies from zero to 30, reflecting the state of conservation of a certain area. Uh, this methodology is already been established and has been used for some research groups that even work in the Pampa biome. Um, the social environment profile of rural producers uh, was also traced and their engagement in the, in the project was evaluated. Uh, here we see the type of information collected in the survey, general, generic and specific information, family and property land use, material goods, animal husbandry, property management, uh, project uh, environment, project expectation, and also social aspects. Um, the next objective was to implement reference units on the, on the properties. Uh, each reference unit is composed of a technical project in which different techniques for managing the area were used. Uh, a quick explanation of these techniques. Uh, rotational grazing, the cattle are moved to portions of the pasture called paddocks, while other portions rest. Each paddock must provide all the needs of animals, such as food, water, sometimes uh, shade and shelter. And shelter. Uh, the second one, the fair grazing, consisting of postponing uh, grazing that has completed maturation of seeds of a desirable species. Uh, animal load in cattle grazing systems, animal performance is measure uh, of the production, production of each animal in the, in the herd over a given time. Often, depending on the context, it's necessary to perform an animal load adjustment. Uh, the mechanical and chemical control, the mechanical control to open a certain area and chemical control to control the, 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 invader, the invasive species. And finally, overseeding, establishing of an annual winter crops in an already, already formed perennial crop. Uh, all these six non excludable techniques are widely used in this type of context and favor native species that also are used to increase cattle performance. Uh, here are some uh, images, uh, rotation of grazing in animal load, the left, mechanical uh, and chemical control. Uh, normally, uh, we, we use uh, brush cutters for this, this, this uh, kind of technique and for overseeing a kind of equipment here to catch native seeds. Uh, for overseeing. Um, 
So uh, to the, the fourth uh, objective to develop and apply the day monitoring protocol uh, to achieve this objective, three sampling, sampling events were performed. We defined 20 sample units per property, totaling 400 square meter. Uh, two quantitative parameters were evaluated. The first one was uh, soil coverage. There is log res and nat native coverage, manure, river, bare ground, vegetation height, height, and 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 also rock. Uh, we, here we use a reference scale, long scale, a very known uh, uh, scale to infer a percentage of coverage. For each class, there is a variation variation range. Uh, here in this graph, the average percentage of each per meter is shown for the 20 properties. Uh, and in red bars, we see the variation in average coverage for the invader, for the invasive species. So, um, the second quantitative per meter was, was phytosociological data in which we evaluated each species individually. On the left, we see part of the table of one property named Atoka, uh, in which we see the data for dozen species, including log grass. Here in red, we have absolute coverage, relative coverage, um, absolute frequency, relative frequency, and uh, also an uh, index of uh, importance of these species. Um, concerning the native flora, uh, 300. 29 species belong to 50 families were found and here very significant resulting is the presence of this species per square meter ranging from eight to 55 species per square meter. This is a lot of species. Um, this step was not included in the original project, but we decided to investigate the associated fauna especially small rodents that could disperse seeds uh, of the invasive species. Uh, tree sampling events were carried out in which you use traps to capture species and analyze the stomach contents and feces. Um, only two species was, were captured, but there is no trace of log bread seeds. Uh, in these steps, we had some uh, logistic problems uh, related to weather conditions, number of days in the field, maturation of seeds. It wasn't the expected result, but we think the attempt has some success. We have some, some interesting results. Um, the fifth uh, objective was to, to, is, in fact, to, to develop an environmental planning for territorial management. Uh, in this step, we aim to combine data on vegetation coverage of the invasive species to to calibrate the model with predictive models that are under developed by another team. The idea is to produce a map of priority areas to be ecologically managed in terms of restoration. Uh, at the end, we expect, we, we expect to have a map similar to this on the left that is a map of priority areas of endangered grassland species in Pampa Bayon, and we globally expect a similar result for the restoration of invaded areas. This goal is still in progress. Uh, so I, I have some, some, some time. Um, Finally, the last objective uh, was to perform the project follow-up um, of all these steps. And for, for that, we have a communication consultancy, which has been producing a lot of, a lot of publicity material. And I would like to present one of these materials. Basically, uh, uh, this, this video, the video brings different perspectives on the Pampa biome. One from our technical coordinator, Rafael. Uh, one of our uh, technicians from Emater, our, our partner, who works directly with the farmers, with the, with the producers. And one of the farmers involved in this, this project, the translation is not very accurate, but I believe it's understandable. So.
you hear? The yes. yes, we can is, hear the sound. But the volume is quite low. É, qual a principal característica do bioma Pampa? Ele é um bioma é, quase que exclusivamente campestre. Né? Ele é formado por diferentes tipos de formação de campo. Né? E isso diferencia ele de, quase, de praticamente todos os outros biomas do Brasil. Né? Esse trabalho de potencializar o campo nativo é uma coisa que não tem fim, né? Ele, ele não, não acaba. Porque a gente que é pampeana, a maior parte de nós, né, urbanos, que somos a maioria, mas muitos dos rurais também nem imaginamos que estamos num ambiente campestre, que o ambiente campestre é a vez mais rico do planeta, né? Mais biodiverso do planeta em relação à, à cobertura vegetal. A gente teve reportado que a agricultura, né, na forma de, de grandes monoculturas, de lavouras, ela está sendo o principal é, agente que está transformando né, os campos nativos do bioma pampa em áreas degradadas. O melhor manejo econômico possível para ganhar dinheiro produzindo pecuária também é o que melhor preserva, né? porque se conseguir trabalhar com altura de pasto, manejando manejando o campo com, com mais assim sintonia com, com, os, com os ciclos de crescimento dele, né? de, de produtividade de pasto, em relação às diferentes estações do ano e mesmo quando está seco ou quando está muita chuva, o desafio de sintonizar esse manejo né? é, de forma criativa é a forma mais mais é, inteligente, vamos dizer assim, de, de preservar esse ambiente, né? porque consegue aumentar a diversidade biológica, inclusive de espécies forrageiras de interesse econômico, né? Mas também potencializar todo o sistema, né? Apoiar a fauna, apoiar, apoiar, né? Insetos, insetos eh, animais que a gente quase nem vê no campo, né? Que se beneficiam com um campo mais empastado, vamos dizer assim, né? É uma das preocupações que todo mundo deveria ter um pouquinho, melhorar um pouco mais o meio ambiente, onde a gente eh, vive e tal porque a gente vê muita degradação de terras, matos e tudo isso aí. Isso prejudica, olha hoje o anônimo mesmo que é. Só que antigamente nós não tínhamos. E eu, eu era um dos que eu ficava, eu via, estava vendo que, o que estava acontecendo com, ele, com o campo e, e assim, ó, se não fosse o projeto eu não ia ter condições nem uh, aquela assistência que estão que dando e dizendo por que 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 o ano ia ser, ia proliferar, ia tomar conta, e como está tomando conta no, no, em campos por aí. E, mas já que o projeto é para o campo nativo, vamos defender o campo nativo, com certeza. A gente tem algumas alternativas que podem melhorar a conservação né, e a recuperação dessas áreas. Né? Por exemplo, aqui no, no projeto Restaurapa, né, toda a nossa iniciativa né, em combater o capim anone, né, em implementar técnicas de manejo, né, que sejam sustentáveis para o campo, são formas né, de conservar as espécies nativas e, ao mesmo tempo, excluir as espécies exóticas. Um grande desafio mesmo, né, em relação até para a pergunta anterior, é mudar a forma de manejar o campo. Um capim que a gente... Isso aí sim, eu já antes de, de, de ver isso aí, eu já pelo pouco que a gente conhece do campo e vive o dia a dia, até uma certa altura ele, ele a gente conseguia... A, Colocava mais um gado, mais uma ovelha ali, mas tem uma hora que ele começa a emacegar que não tem condições, aí não tem mesmo. No projeto, esses manejos estão todos eles associados, né? dependendo da área, entra entra diferimento com roçada mecânica até aí, roçada química, entra é, é, rotativo com, com sobre semeadura, né? com melhoramento de campo nativo e roçada química, depende de caso a caso, né? em função da, da, das áreas. So um, um, I hope the future generations can see this beautiful place. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you so much, uh, Professor Mauricio, for your presentation. Um, now we move to the question and answer Q and A. Uh, we have a question in a in our chat box. Perhaps we yeah. Uh... Hi, Prof. Mauricio. Thank you very much for that interesting presentation. I would like to ask, what are the challenges that you encounter in conducting your project? Do you get support from the local government and the local community? 
Uh, in fact, we, 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 don't, we don't have uh, support of our local, local government. This, this project is entirely financed by uh, international, international agency. Uh, so we, we don't have the support. Uh, the entire uh, community is connected with this, this project because uh, we have an economic benefit, as I said before. But in terms of government, federal or regional, we don't, we don't have uh, any, any support. Thank you, Prof. Marita. Okay, we have another question uh, in our chat box. Uh, uh, this uh, question is asked by uh, Dr. Raymond Tan. So Dr. Tan asks, uh, are the models used available for researchers to adopt for other ecosystems? Um, here in Brazil, we, we have a, a lot of researchers working in different in, in, in all these five different biomes, and many of them many of them using uh, models to predict uh, some situations. Uh, yes, uh, depending depending on the, the question, is 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 I think is 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 possible to adapt. Okay, thank you, Professor Mauricio. Uh, are there any other questions uh, from our audience? Okay, we have a question from Rogerio Paolo Tobo, uh, and he asked uh, if this model, uh, model way to intergravitate uh, systems. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if um, um, I, I understood the question, the question but uh, I'm not a, uh, an, an expert in this, in this, in this model. Uh, I, I'm, I'm not sure about the question, what's the integrity system, Roger? In terms of perhaps, our, perhaps uh, Roher, you can further uh, clarify. One, one, one suggestion, I, I think, oh, I would say to put it in, in Portuguese. Perfect. Thank you, Professor Roger. Okay. Uh, yes, uh, integration between between uh, grazing system and, and livestock, yes. But forests, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure, but um, for sure between, between grazing and livestock, it's, 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 it's very possible. Okay. Um, yeah, we have uh, time for one more question. Perhaps, uh, Professor Mauricio, you mentioned in your presentation about uh, uh, social acceptance, social impact of the project. Uh, what was the uh, social impact uh, or uh, the, that impact to the community was uh, also quantified in the project? Yes, um, this is a, a, a huge, challenge to engage these people in this in this project and at the end we hope we hope uh, we we hope to to present a, a more uh, robust results re related to this this social aspect of our project uh, for now we, it it's it was very very complicated to engage these people and the project is is uh, that has a very good results, but is always is always a barrier a barrier to to engage this community. But at at the end, we 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 got it. If you if you may I, uh, yeah. I think we have um, 
besides the technological issues that uh, the Dr. Mauricio presented, we also have some cultural issues because people are used to, to deal with the uh, plantations, with the livestock in a way. And when we are presented with this alien species, it was presented as a, a innovation, a, a good way to have profit. And, and it easily it was integrated, but in the long, not so long, but in the mid time, uh, they already have exhaustions, they have problems, they actually are having uh, less productivity. So uh, it, it should be obvious that all this work that uh, Professor Mauricio, Cristina, Rafael, and everybody is working with the, our colleagues from uh, Federal University and the Mater uh, was worthwhile, but uh, they have some prejudice. Wow, well, it, it should be like that. Why are you trying to change it again? So, so I think uh, uh, one of the issues we will be presenting our results with these people that were willing to engage. So we have um, even that people that were talking there, they are from there. So, so it's easier for them uh, to be heard than someone from the university. So I, I, we, we really uh, think that maybe in a year or two, uh, we will be saying, yeah, more people uh, got the results and are willing to change our practice. Yes, it's our, it's our end. Thank you, Professor Patricia and Professor Mauricio. Uh, with the interest of time, uh, we have one, one last question uh, from Ria. Uh, and she asked, how do you ensure the continuity of the project after the project has finished? or the sustainability of the project? Yes, um, we, we need more financial support to continue this project is, is another, another barrier. We got some, 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 some money to, to develop uh, during three years, but after we, we, need, we need government, local government, regional government to engage. Uh, as well in this in this project to continue our our work. Yes, no doubt. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Mauricio. Uh, and uh, yeah, thank you so much for your uh, presentation. Uh, it's really an honor to have you for today's uh, lecture series. Uh, and uh, to present uh, the next uh, lecture series, may I call back our co-host uh, Ria. I would like to invite everyone to next month's sustainability lecture. And um, it will be on October 26th, still the last Wednesday of the month. The topic is plastic to trash, plastic trash to monomers and intermediates. Our speaker is Professor Gennaro Mafia from Manhattan College. Please use the QR code to register to the sustainability lecture series. And we will also send this via email. Another thing is, we'd uh, be glad to hear from you. Uh, please do not forget to evaluate our lecture today by going to this link or using the QR code. So thank you very much, Ria. Uh, thank you, Professor Mauricio. Uh, for your Thank lecture you. uh, to Thank our you so much. to our guests, uh, everyone. Thank you so much for your time, uh, and I uh, will see you again on the next lecture series. Thank you. Thank you Mar very much. Thank you. Hey, see you. Thanks. Well done. Thank you. See you again. Thank you. See you. Thank you. See Bye. you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Ria and Aris Alvin. Aris, thank you. Thank, thank, you, you, thank you, Thank you. Welcome, sir. Ria. Dr. Galaba. Yeah. Um,